and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Heimer Lux Control. It's been a long time since we've played some Heimer Dinger. So we're going to go ahead and try some, some Heimer Dinger out with uh, Lux here, pairing those two together. Let's see how they do these days. Um, we got a, a list that was submitted by a viewer here in chat and, you know, we changed a card or two, but um, it looks pretty good. We have some stuff that's... Um, you know, kind of new for this metagame. We got a couple purifies in here. Definitely important against all the they who endure running around. But then there's also like elusives that get they get buffed a bunch and like your fizz decks and stuff. Um, purify can be really good there, and, and you can usually just find some uses for purify. We have a rising spell force, which at first I was like, what what are we doing with this card? Um, but this card is the answer to culling strike, right? They culling strike's a huge part of this metagame, and frostbite plus culling strike. And if they have that car, you can go Rising Spell Force and counter Culling Strike. So that's that's kind of cool with a plus four, plus zero. So I'm fine with putting one in the deck for that reason. Um, then, yeah, we have our Heimerdinger. We have our Lux. Um, you know, we're going to be trying to play turn three Remembrance uh, each game. This is going to be the card that we're going to be mulliganing for, looking for Remembrance on three, then like Inciter on four, or... Um, Mage Seeker Persuader plus a two mana spell on turn four. Um, something like that. Okay. And then we got some card draw and Unyielding Spirit at the top end. All right, so let's try some Mage, or some uh, Heimer Lux Control. I was about to say Mage Seeker Lux. Some Heimer Lux Control. Let's see how this does. It's been a long time since we played some Heimer Dinger. So good deck to start the day off with. And then we have a Legion Drummer Bannerman deck with Fiora and Garen. That one should, should be pretty sweet after this. Um, Ash Thresh is a donation deck where it's going to be similar to um, Ash Harrowing, but no Harrowings. So that's a donation deck we're going to be playing third. And then Puff Cap Plunder will play some Sejuani and Teemo. Always fun combining the Puff Caps and the plunder keyword. Ranger's Resolve is a good card in this matchup. Where they're doing little, little chip shots of damage. I do like Ranger's Resolve, but we gotta make sure we look for Remembrance. We gotta find it. So, mulligan everything. And look for this card. So this is a good opener for us with having Remembrance on turn three, and then we'll have Persuader plus single combat. I like that. We want to get the Vanguard Cavalry, I think the name is the name of the card. I didn't show you. So we want, we want the 5-5 five, five, tough, which I think is Vanguard Calvary. Gonna take some time to fight through all these two twos and one ones. Definitely considering just passing. But I guess I'll, I'll play Sergeant. If I pass, I, I only waste one mana where they would waste three mana. And now by playing this, you know, I don't have barrier anymore to protect my 5-3 if they try to kill it. Alright, that's a good one. I'm just going to block the two two twos. 
I guess with make it rain, it may be better to block the 1-1 one, one with the sergeant. Obviously, the, the 5-1 will just block a 2-2. Two, two. Huh. And they're just passing again. Play generic three three. Well, that's what they get for passing. Could have just played that right away. So Four Demacia is a thing, but I feel like if I play Four Demacia, then then they will just play, like they'll just like use some removal in response and kill a couple of things. So the Four Demacia won't really help me. That's what I feel like is gonna happen. Standing, you have no alibi. Show them our metal. So all these are going to die. If I single combat and fight the powder keg, all of my stuff still will die. Basically, all it'll do is kill the spiderling. That is not worth. I guess, yeah, that's all it'll do. Is it'll just kill that spiderling. So that is not worth fighting over. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. So my Bannerman would have hit. There we go, that's the best one. For the glory of Demacia. Alright, so it's um, expecting Leviathan this next turn at 8 mana. So I kind of like using all of my mana where I can have 8 mana Thermogenic Beam. Just kill Leviathan straight up. Board is so chill. Okay. All right, three damage, and we're almost there. I know they've just passed. So I will pass as well. 
I don't want to play something else, and then they play Leviathan afterwards. So now I have an extra four mana to spend. Oh, Captain Farron. That was not as expected. Hmm. It's unfortunate I have to spend everything on there that I, I don't get to play something first. Because if I play something first, then they attack. And that's not an attack that I want to happen. for Leviathan, if that's their plan. Triple Decimate, that's so many Decimates. Just 60% of your life total. I'm already gone with 25%, so that'd be 85% total. Okay, stunned. We can do this. Show them our medal. You can't outrun justice. Thanks, Godfrey. Yeah, we got new new cards. Alright, we'll check those out after this video. Which may be a long one at this pace. We're still in game one. <laughs> Alright, so I'm doing two damage to that thing right now so that my Vanguard Cavalry can fight it. That's my thought process here. Hmm. They do have this Ravenous Flock. But I have, I have Barrier. So that's okay. Alright, leveled up Lux. I wish we had six more mana. You know, I wish I had, sorry, one more mana so we could play the six drop before Demacia and get another final spark to be able to finish off the Leviathan. Um, I wonder if it's better to. It's probably better to go after the Butcher. Then this has two damage, overwhelm over, and then this mystic mystic shot can go upstairs. Oh, 
The question is, is like, do I four Demacia first or just attack? All right, so if I just attack, let's say they block, they block like my five six, and then they have removal for the four one. I guess I can challenge with the four one here, so they'd have to have removal for the six two, and Man, this, this seems this seems difficult for them to handle. They have to kill three things. That doesn't seem easy. Or just the two big things, I guess, and have the two three powers hit them. But then, even if the two three powers hit them, we add the Mystic Shot. They have to get rid of three things. Alright, GG's. Get some scouts. Uh, yep, Venter. Yeah, looks like we got some new cards out, so we'll we'll check those out after this video. So after four more games, um, <laughs> so that could be like forty minutes or so. There'll be a little bit, but um, yeah, we'll check those out here in a little bit. Let's see. Okay, against this deck, I'm actually going to keep. I'm gonna look at this. I'm gonna keep the rest of these. Basically, Remembrance, of course, would be our best thing to go find, but if we're not going to have Remembrance, at least we can put a fight up with a 3-3 a three, three on turn 3, you know, maybe Mystic Shot or something on turn 2, have like a single combat to go along with the 3-3. Three, three. So, like, this hand won't kill us. Hey, Silver Fuse. Um, welcome to the channel. Said you're new. Basically, what, what I do is... So I stream here every day. We play four different decks with Legends of Runeterra every day here. And I play five games with each deck. Now, I hope they don't have Ranger's Resolve for Mystic Shotting Petty Officer. Hopefully this works out. Okay. So just take the three. And we got two extra cards in hand than they do, which is the good news. The bad news is I don't really have a good turn this turn. Raise the banner! Yep. Lift our spirits! Saving my mana for Heimerdinger doesn't help exactly. That's not bad. Yeah, so we can purify like the the hapless aristocrat and turn it into just like a regular one one that doesn't make another one one instead of being a two two. That could be good. Okay, that's not bad. I'm one of the good guys, but not that good. It's not bad. Eminently logical. We're gonna take some damage. I'm actually here. Hmm. I 
Vengeance don't determine themselves. I had been planning on blocking with Vanguard Sergeant and then after blocking single combat and, and you know, kill something else. That, that had been my plan. Ouch. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's gonna make a big difference. Because obviously, we need that Heimerdinger to stay alive and get us a whole bunch of turrets. You will not prevail. Maybe I should have just purified and gotten it to a, the 2 1 and, and played the 2 1 and then been able to keep Ranger's Resolve available. Discipline and steal! Um, I don't really have a favorite champion, to be honest. I, I like almost, like, basically all the champions. Like, I, I'm someone who doesn't really have favorites as much, but kind of appreciates all of them for, for what they are and all the, Show them what we're made the cool of. things about them. No, I wouldn't say Heimerdinger is just bad. No, not at all. I mean, it, it dies to removal spells, but that's kind of the story of every champion. You just die to removal spells. All right, we got a full house. me taking nine damage. I am at eight. You're covered. All right, that's me taking twelve. All right, one and one. Yes, the Flash of Brilliance nerf is what hurts Heimerdinger the most. It's not, yeah, it's not. I don't think that, like, the Heimer, you know, quote-unquote nerf of changing the turrets around, I don't think that really has affected Heimerdinger. But yes, Flash of Brilliance costing four mana, that's a huge hit. That is what has made, that is what um, has hurt Heimerdinger more. All right, looking for Remembrance. Not being able to play Heimerdinger plus Flash of Brilliance on turn five anymore is pretty rough. Looking for something to do this turn. Man, we're just gonna have nothing. Thank you for not attacking. Um, I can't stop calling strike. I could stop calling strike, but I can't.
What did we catch? Answers. I have them. So even if I would have kept the two Flash of Brilliances, we can't play both Flash of Brilliance. Like you used to be able to, does cost mana. One fearsome. Dimensions don't determine themselves. Okay, so I didn't block with the Heimerdinger because of Fury of the North, because I decided to play that um, that thing there. Um, obviously, we need to be worried about Reckoning. Wow, no pulling strike. That's awesome. Definitely glad no pulling strike. The single combats have looked a little weird. In our deck. No, they weren't. Just trying to keep reckoning from killing my stuff. Can't have brittle steel and reckoning to get rid of um, Heimerdinger. Yeah, yeah, Tom. It'll be really interesting to see what kind of changes that that are made. We have barrier here, I guess. Round and round and round it goes. Definitely considering purifying the floor be gone. Then go back into just a normal six one, it wouldn't have elusive anymore. And then it wouldn't have this vulnerable or anything like that. Oh, 
dear. Alright, so Fury of the North does not kill me. Hey, what's up, Grace Claw? Alright, they're at 14. No, I think the burst speed with the with the frostbite cards makes sense for how it plays. The the thing that's a lot bigger problem than burst speed with frostbite cards is this this line right here on Ash. This this should not exist. This enemies with zero power can't block. That is not that is not a yeah that that line should not exist. That should be something else. That is a much bigger problem. Like, if that didn't exist, the, the burst speed with Frostbite wouldn't really matter. I guess I'm just attacking here. What am I going to be doing about the Sejuani? I'm not sure. Sejuani's going to be a problem. Not and ready. Oh, now they have reckoning. Right, they've they've had reckoning this whole time, and I. Hmm. What am I doing to stop reckoning? Okay, unyielding spirit. Yeah, I guess I have to play unyielding spirit this turn. Do I want to put it on the floor? Be gone. Or the Heimerdinger. Or the floor be gone. I don't think they have Culling Strike. They haven't had Culling Strike this whole time. Um, I'm worried about... like I'm, I'm worried about passing and then they just go to their turn and attack. Like I want to actually... You know, I want to play this this turn. This is obviously a very bad play against Culling Strike if they have it, but they haven't demonstrated... They haven't demonstrated that they have Culling Strike this whole time. I think it's much more possible that they have... Reckoning. Now we have a 9-9. Nine, nine. That can block Sejuani. That's good. That's the other thing is I wanted to get this out there. But yeah, I didn't want to just pass priority. And that was not an unforeseen outcome. We definitely foresaw that outcome. It's important to have it, I think, the Unyielding Spirit on the 6 one, because the 6 one's a lot better with single combat. Line up. No, I mean, I think Culling Strike is, is perfectly fine. I think that Only the they could even have a little bit better removal. I mean, I think Will of Ionia should go back to 4 mana and stuff. Like, I... I think that it's okay to have interaction and the game's trending in a in a spot where there's like the new set has like no interaction printed, like no removal spells basically. There's like one a six mana six damage thing. I, I just don't want it to be in a spot where nobody has any any removal because it's all way too expensive and you just can't play any removal. Why do I have 11 mana? I need 12 for Lux. I hope they don't have another Reckoning. I 
I don't have any recommendations to counter Ash Sejuani. Playing inside her can block one thing. It's spending all of my mana to deal with one thing, where I can have double single combat to deal with two things, or purify plus single combat, or mystic shot plus single combat. Shine with me. Alright, so because of Fury of the North, I don't want to get too crazy yet of, you know, spending all of my mana because they could Fury of the North and kill me. This keeps me alive at one. So, the, you know, so priority back to them. If this happens, I go to one. But if they have other things, you know, then we can, we can work from there. If they go, like, harsh, okay, they can't harsh winds, but if they, you know, frostbite this thing, then we can Mystic Shot the 4-2. You know, if they have Frostbite for the 6-1 and they have Elixir of Iron, then I guess I'm dead. Fight like the animal you are! Alright, Fury of the North. Uh, two ways we could do it. We could use another single combat or we could use a Purify. Let's just use one of these two Purifies since we got two of them. So now four out of six for Lux. Ooh. Hmm. This is kind of difficult because I want to use the two mana for Lux before, you know, I don't want to use the six here. Single combat would be nice to use, but I don't want them to frostbite like my six one in response and then I don't even get to attack with the six one either. Hopefully we can finish them out this turn. We could definitely be sitting on harsh winds. By the light. Which is fine. I mean, we will. You know, we'll have lethal through harsh winds. They'll have to have like they'll have to have harsh winds plus brittle steel to stay alive. They walked around. I got. Banish the unworthy. Wait, no, because I purify my own thing even if they harsh wind. So no, that doesn't even work. No so no, they they can't stay alive. Not possible. One. 
Yep, you can remove the frostbite with purify. If frostbite was slow speed, you couldn't. Or, you know, if it was fast speed. If it was just fast speed and not burst, you couldn't. Because, you know, fast speed, it resolves at the very end as soon as, you know, like whenever combat does. So if it was fast speed, we were we would not be able to do that. Frostbite at burst speed does make sense. It's just... Um, you know, that the whole can't block with Ash, that, that doesn't really make sense. Especially in a game where... Um, what are we playing against? Ezreal Fizz? Especially in a game where... Uh, I'm mulligan all this. Where you can only have six units across. And Ash already eliminates one of them. And Harsh Winds, like, eliminates a couple more. And that's even if you have six units. Maybe, you, you know, you only have, like, three. No, the... No, so the with fast speed you you could respond with deny, but you couldn't respond with like a pump spell because you know fast speed they go onto the stack and then all the stuff on on the stack responds like all that um all the stuff on the stack resolves like right before combat does you you don't get to like let the stack resolve and then play more things and then go to combat. with damage. So Frost would always resolve after if it was fast speed. And so that, that makes that a problem. Looks like we'll probably get a three for one with this Vanguard Cavalry. No, uh, I'm not greedy. I changed some stuff from a few days ago, Grande, uh, but nothing from like yesterday. But I, you know, I'm using a different wave pattern on the microphone, and I now have a pop filter on my microphone, as you can see. And um, so, so yeah, I've done those two things with the sound. Also, maybe thinking, we're thinking that. So I have the the I've gotten a new cord, but it's still it's plugged into my keyboard like the USB thing on the keyboard. And we're thinking that maybe that that isn't um, going so well for us, the, the USB and the keyboard, maybe. And so I'm trying, um, and so actually coming in the mail today sometime, it may be during the stream, I'm gonna be getting like a 10-foot cord for uh, this plugin so I can plug my mic back into the back of my uh, computer um, directly. And so we'll see if um, if that helps. Magic stops with me. Um. So maybe that will help also. Because I've used this microphone for years, and it's never been as bad as it has been over the last, like, month or two. I got, so I don't know what's suddenly been going on. It's always been good before. So maybe it's something, like, that's gone wrong with the keyboard. Maybe.
So we're still trying different things. Somebody talked about getting an audio interface and recommended an audio interface. And I, I looked that up, but that was like $200. And so I don't really have that to spend. Uh, let's see. So Heimer, we have three mana to go with Heimer. Lux, we got the two mana. Let's go with Lux. This is at five out of six. We're about to be leveled up. Yeah, but I, so Tom, it's weird. It's it's weird. Sometimes the sound is good, sometimes it's not, and it's different for different people. It, and I have noticed it, like if I try headphones, you know, watching like headphones through like the YouTube app, you know, sometimes it's not very good. And it's like, it'll like left or right at different times will be, um, you know, will be heavier or lighter. It seems to mostly be a headphone issue thing, but I don't know. It's kind of weird in that respect. So three cards in hand. I can try. I can try, try double mystic shot. Get rid of Fizz. Hmm. I guess that's a thing. I think nine is. Oh, okay, it goes to 10. I was say, I thought 9 was as far as it goes um, in that respect. Maybe the burst speed doesn't actually go on the stack. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't count. Because it's burst speed. So I should have just had an Unyielding Spirit up this turn. I shouldn't have played that Vanguard. I didn't really think about Riptide Rex. I think I'm probably dead now without, you know, with the not holding up on Yielding Spirit for my Lux and, and for doing what I did with uh, playing the 3-3. Three, three. Looks like I'm dead. Can't ever forget about Riptide Rex. I forgot about Riptide Rex. A preference between Daybreak and Nightfall? What do you What do you mean, Cake Crusade? Like a What do you mean with a, a preference there for Daybreak and Nightfall? 
No, we haven't looked at the new cards from today yet. We're doing that af after this video, after these five games. Which one do I like more? I don't... I guess I don't have a preference. I, I don't really have one that I like more. Um, yeah, I don't... Uh, they're they're kind of the same thing. I don't... It's like... Like, what do I like more, Barrier or Frostbite? It's like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're both just mechanics, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. I'm not much of a... This is... I feel like this is a detriment for me, but I'm, I'm not much of somebody who gets... I don't know, I'm, I'm very even keel on everything. I'm not like somebody who gets like super hyped for you know, kind of anything or gets really down on anything or I don't I don't have like um, you know how huge opinions on stuff. I don't know if I'm saying any of this very well, but Hopefully y'all understand what I'm, what I'm saying. Mages can't hide from me. This to your bill. Yeah, I think. Yeah, with Daybreak Nightfall, I do think that playing both Daybreak and Nightfall make makes a lot of sense. No of playing alibi. both of them together. You can't outrun justice. We'll we'll see if you can yeah, we'll see if that works out if you're able to make a, a deck with you know, with both of them. You know, like obviously we'll have to see like with all the cards, but just from a, a theoretic standpoint of you have your Daybreak cards that reward you for playing them Dead first, and then you also have your Nightfall, Nightfall cards that reward you for playing them second, and you can combine those in the same deck. That does make a lot of sense to be oh, to do that so and put those together. Because um, if you have like strictly all Daybreak cards, then you only get one, you know, reward each turn. So I'm gonna level up now. It's not. You know, like your first card that you play each turn, you get reward for that, and that's it. And then with the Nightfell card, same thing. Like each first card that you play, you're not getting any reward for, but then you're getting reward for stuff afterwards. You got to have the the things first. I'm not sure which one of these I want to play. Mystic Shot or Gotcha? I kind of think the Gotcha. Right, so putting them together, think I think that makes a lot of sense. Like you, you play your Daybreak card first, and then you play your Nightfall cards after that, and combine them like that. I kind of forgot we have Rising Spell Force. Hard. You'll fight or you'll swim. Gross, that's such a, wow, such a great card for them. Give them the two blockers like that. With one card. Especially this one being hapless aristocrat. For my Grey Horn companion, that's just awesome. Safety will cost you. Soldiers to me.
Petty Officer went from like no play as a 3-1 to one of the very best cards in the game as a 3-2. It's crazy how much difference um, how much difference that uh, extra little bit of health matters. I guess I should not be playing Lux. Now I'm not going to forget about Riptide Rex. What happened forgetting about Riptide Rex? I kind of expected them to block the 1-1 one, one and then Riptide Rex away my board. That's what I was expecting. Come on a musical journey. Everywhere I go, the light follows. Should have played this succession. Right, we got two mana spent. Vessel small, but she ain't lacking courage. And Jaw Hunters is great. Bilgewater has such good value everywhere. Right, like all these cards just generate so many more cards. Like, makes Bilgewater great. I rarely forget. I never forget. Stand strong. Wasn't playing around thermogenic beam. And the Shadow Isles Bilgewater deck. Definitely use an, another um, the ocean herself will fear us. No, can't use that. So I definitely use another champion or progress day. I'll make corpses of them all. Captain's arrived. This is going to level up Gangplank. We're going to be casting through my giant beam on the Gangplank. To be able to block the Dreadway. For now. I mean, they have all these cards in hand. And they should have, like, sea monsters and everything. So this is probably lethal, but this is just my best play. Oh, but yeah. Do. 
uh, just didn't have the top end, you know, to compete there. You know, just didn't have the card advantage and the top end to compete with Rex and Dreadway and everything that my opponent had going on, the Jaw Hunters and stuff like that. Didn't have the card advantage. You see, they ran us out of cards. Uh, the fourth one, I definitely should have won. I just didn't wasn't really thinking about Riptide Rex. Lost that one. That thermogenic beam they stole was pretty rough also that last game. Um, Purify was pretty good. Secession was, you know, pretty average. This deck definitely relies on its champions. Um, for sure. We're definitely relying on our champions. It does seem like we could use some more card advantage. Maybe we need another progress day in here. Um, we're running out of cards quite a bit in, in those games. Like even, you know, both, both those last two games are just running out of cards. Um, Flash of Brilliance really didn't look good at all. Um, yeah, really didn't look good at all. So maybe take out one of those for another progress day. That could be something where, you know, it's like if you have Heimerdinger and you get to pull out the Flash of Brilliance, you know, can be okay. But there's a lot of ifs in there and the random six plus cost spell wasn't very good. Subpersible in here. I would much rather have Radiant Guardian than Subpersible. I mean, I I love Subpersible as a card. I think, I think it's awesome. But I think that the, in this kind of deck, I think you'd rather have like a Radiant Guardian, to be honest. Um, but there we go. So that's Heimer Lux Control. Ranger's Resolve was, was good, except for whenever my opponent stole it and had it for zero mana, again, against, against another Bilgewater deck, that, that card cost me that game number four also, the zero mana Ranger's Resolve. Um, you know, they had, they had zero mana, we were going to kill Fizz, we were going to kill their other thing, like we were going to be fine, but and that cost me as well. All right, that's Heimer Lux Control. Good to play Heimerdinger again and just kind of check in to see what Heimerdinger is doing. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I would appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.